So in our previous sessions, uh, we've talked about identity. Um, we've talked about our daily experiences with stereotypes, um, with privilege. And today, we're going to start our first session on kind of like our community history and our kind of communal history um, and our family history as well for our curriculum. And to do so, we're going to explore, of course, our family histories, our stories, our, you know, our parents, our grandparents, how they came here, what the experiences that they went through and how that kind of shapes and molds us and our future. And also the, you know, the reasons why we're passionate, why we're motivated to create change, to, you know, to build off of their legacies and to build, create legacies for our future generations also. So the sessions to come, um, for the next few weeks also um, will be about the history of Muslims in America, the history of our local kind of county, and also how we can interact with our you know, local government and what we're doing and how to be, you know, how to be an ad advocate and also how to build off of the history from those who came before us and to really create change as well. So um, another thing I had sent out an email. Hopefully you all got a chance to possibly interview um, maybe a parent, a grandparent, you know, an older sibling. Um, if you could. Um, if not, that's totally okay. Um, I know it was kind of last minute. I understand with all the changes that we've had. Um, but use kind of what you already know and what you can already compile to participate in today's discussion and our activities today. And I think it'll be really good and, you know, it'll be really powerful today. So let's kind of, before starting, let's kind of take a moment to think about um, where today's topic falls in our framework for challenging oppression. So by learning, and, by learning about and sharing our family histories, um, we're combating oppressive knowledge, policies, and of course, real world consequences. So as you all remember, we had our knowledge power charts from I think it was the first week or the second week that we had created. Um, and they had the last one that we made kind of focused on, um, you know, real world changes that we can make that are positive and um, how to combat, you know, the different stereotypes that we had mentioned. And just thinking about today, like on that knowledge power chart, remember we had the knowledge in one section, the policies, and then real world consequences also. So thinking about the knowledge we have today will be focused on artistic and cultural production. And then also relationships and storytelling. And then um, obviously well, we're not working with direct policies today, but our real world, real world consequences, right? So creating spaces for collective hearing, for storytelling, for you know, um, understanding each other and empowering each other as a group and uplifting each other as a group based off of our histories and based off of what we can learn about each other as well. Awesome. And... Again, as always, um, with every section, I um, just want to show everybody the being that we have, kind of our community guidelines, the, you know, the values that kind of guide us um, throughout our session and throughout you know, things that we carry on after, out of here also, right, in our daily lives too, of course. So things like respect, um, open mind, diverse perspectives, um, empathy, collaboration, and then of course, the on the outside of our being, we have you know the values that we don't you know don't want to carry on, don't want to bring here or outside, arrogance, animosity, bad manners, etc. So just kind of remember our community guidelines for this session and for all our other sessions, as we always kind of mentioned before, um, as well. So today, our learning objectives are to explore the different ideas that we have of home and of homeland and what this means to us as Muslims that are living in America. And for many of us as first generation or second generation Muslims, what that means to us and what our history means um, in our daily lives. And then we're also here to identify you know, the larger social, political, and economic factors, of course, which have shaped our life, as in the previous sessions too. And finally, to learn your family history and to be able to share and teach others about it and kind of explore that, right? So to identify the larger factors, you know, again, the social, political, economic factors, which have shaped your life, um, which have shaped your family's life, um, their plight, and also those that have shaped our community members as well. So our kind of schedule, we have our, you know, we did our roll call, our housekeeping items, um, and then I have a 
you know, kind of like a short Islamic story that I want to share with you all. I think is important. Um, just a little, you know, a little story, and then I will will have a spiritual bloodlines handout that I'll pass out to everybody that we'll read and have a short discussion on. And then our main big activity today will be our poetry activity, which I think is really awesome and which is um, which will be really fun to do as a group as well. And yeah, there are learning objectives as well. And yeah, so I wanted to start today with kind of like a short story, just to think, just to get us thinking and just to, you know, think about our values as well, our values of kindness, empathy, understanding, and basic compassion. So the story is called The Old Lady Who Threw Rubbish. So during um, the Prophet Sallallahu time, um, there, he had this neighbor who would always give him a hard time and who would always, uh, always make it a point to really go out of her way to give him, you know, to make his life harder. So every morning, um, on, on cue, he would walk by her home and she would throw rubbish at him or trash at him in his direction, oftentimes hitting him. And every day, you know, he kind of shrugged it off. He didn't make a big deal about it. He, you know... He didn't let it bother him. He didn't let it create any animosity towards her. He didn't hate her. He didn't, you know, want bad for her. He didn't wish bad. He always prayed for her as well. So this was a daily thing, a daily thing, a weekly thing. It was a, you know, it was on cue. And then one day as Prophet, the Prophet Sallallahu was walking out by her house, um, he noticed that he wasn't hit by any rubbish. And he thought it was odd. He said, I wonder if something happened. I wonder what's going on. And then another day went on. He still didn't hear from her. He still didn't experience that. So he, one day he went out there in the morning and he knocked on her door. And he heard a really faint voice saying, you know, who is it? Come in. You know, um, I'm back here. And so he went in and he saw that the lady was really sick. And he saw that she was suffering. And what he did, what the Prophet Sallallahu did, was that he went to sit by her and he prayed with her and he prayed for her to get better and he prayed for Allah to forgive her and to, you know, grant her understanding and to take care of her as well. And, you know, we think about the different experiences that he had with, you know, dealing with her and with her throwing trash at him, with her, you know, pestering him. He could have easily, you know, wanted, you know, wish bad for her or could have easily been upset with her or, you know, created some form of you know problems with her but he didn't instead he prayed and he was compassionate and the idea of you know he took care of his neighbor even though you know even if they're different or even if they're having struggle he still made it a point to take care of them and to try to understand and eventually um based off that story um the that lady did eventually convert to islam a little bit down the line as well and she understood which was you know which is incredible um, and that's a story we think about family history. That's a story that my mom has been telling me for, gosh, since probably since I was a really, really, really young kid. Um, and she's told me and my, I have two older sisters as well who are, you know, who are quite a bit older than me. But a story that she's been sharing with us all just to kind of get us to think about things a little bit and to put everything into perspective as well. So I kind of listed out a few of the... Um, kind of the general themes and kind of like the things that I want you all to think about um, here and then as, you know, as we go on in our daily lives also. But just looking at the values from the Prophet Sallallahu in the story and even in other stories as well, just the ideas of being patient and also steadfast um, in the face of adversity and even when it's dealing with other people or, you know, a lot of the arguments or a lot of the issues that you have with other people still being passionate and still being steadfast and, you know, wanting the best and doing what you can to be kind also. And then, of course, compassion, as I mentioned, and, you know, really emphasizing and really thinking about trying to understand, right, instead of using vengeance or being vengeful and, you know, creating more animosity or creating more hatred, right? And then finally, we have the idea of, you know, building connections and relationships and the more we foster them of course the more they will help us in our future and the more you know it's good to be kind and it's good to be you know build relationships with as many people as possible of course and it's something that'll help you all as you get older too and great um so next we'll have kind of our first uh handout here today inshallah um, 
if I can get um, Samina or Mariam, if I can get you guys up here really quick. Everybody's so quiet. Great, and I'm, I think we all have that. Would anybody like to volunteer to to be our volunteer to kind of read the story for today? Anybody? I'd rather not choose someone to do so. <laughs> Anyone? Awesome. Yeah, let me get you the microphone for you. Wait, can you guys? Okay, there we go. Um, put yourself in the shoes of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You have begun receiving revelation from Allah through Gabriel, peace be upon him, and you have had some time to gain perspective about your mission. All your life, you have walked past the Kaaba, a monument that is beloved to your tribesmen and special to the clan of Hashim, from which you are sprung. You partook in its rebuilding and resolved the conflict between the tribal chiefs when they fought over who would place the black stone in its position. You had them share by carrying it on a piece of cloth, each tribal leader holding a corner until you placed the black stone in its place with your own hands. The Kaaba has always been dear to you, a connection to Allah, but also to your family, which you lost at a young age. Your forefather, Qusay, was the one who had introduced the practice of Nifadla to this city, giving food and water to the pilgrims of the Kaaba. And it was your grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, who had restored the well of Zamzam for all the pilgrims to quench their thirst. It was he who had prayed for the Kaaba's protection when the jealous governor from Yemen tried to destroy it with his elephant. And now you inherit the spiritual legacy of Abraham, peace be upon him, who built this Kaaba centuries ago. Now you will restore the Kaaba to glorifying Allah's oneness. By Allah's will, you will rid this place of idol worship, just like your spiritual forefathers, Abraham, and all of the prophets had challenged the idols of their time. It is not just the stone statues themselves that you will remove, but the abuse of power and the tribal um, elitism which those idols represent. Your task will not be easy. You ask Allah for help and assistance in this task. Our family histories are a mixed bag. Among our ancestors were those who believed and those who associated partners with Allah. They did noble and righteous deeds and they made mistakes. Allah calls upon us to critically reflect on um, al-awwalun, those who came before. Take inspiration and faith from their examples and challenge falsehood and oppression that is passed down from one generation to the next. How does your family history move or inspire you towards just, injustice? Or justice sorry. Awesome, and thank you for reading that for us. And so, um, first kind of first thoughts, does anyone have any, you know, first thoughts about this after reading this? Um, any, you know, anything they found interesting or anything they'd like to share um, based off of this, based off of this story, anybody? Or any of the other stories that we've heard before or anything that we could think about? Anyone? If not, no, that's okay also. But um, I ask you all then that final question that uh, that was read also. So, um, in your you know, as we get going today, how does your family history move or inspire you towards justice? How does the um, to all of you? How does the experience of your parents or your grandparents or your family, you know, your family history as a whole? How does that inspire you today? Anyone have anything they would like to share? Come on, y'all. I know somebody has a story or something. If not, um, Samina, would you like to share? <laughs> so, 
people rushing to share, I figure I'm going to take the microphone. No, I was actually thinking when I was hearing the story, you know, oftentimes you, you hear from people, they're like, oh, well, my family did this, or my family, you know, was, they helped found the mosque, they did this. And it's like, you know, the process on, he was so humble. He's not looking at it as though like, hey, like I, like we did all this stuff. And so that's why we're like, should be listened to. And, but it was really also, mashallah, people followed his leadership because of the content of his character, the person who is, he didn't have that pride, you know, that I think a lot of us may have if we had such of a family history as well, you know? Um, so I thought that was beautiful. And, but um, you would ask the question, how does your family history move or inspire you to do justice? So for me, I'm just going to come to the front because this is so weird. Um, for me, like my, my parents, they uh, had moved to San Diego and they were one of the first Muslims, you know, over there. And mashallah, they helped start the community over there. They helped start the masjid over there. But one of the things that I... The reason why I got involved with care is because I saw that. I saw that, mashallah, like they recognized that our place in this community isn't just to make money or have fun or whatever, but it was to really establish the community and help out and help others. And um, that's kind of why I started in what I was doing. And I remember um, when I was young, there was the Gulf War was happening. And a lot of... Um, you know, hatred, discrimination, a lot of things were being said about Islam and Muslims. But there wasn't an organization in place to help defend the Muslim community or to speak out or to like, you know, go and talk to the media. My father was one of those people that, I mean, I think people um, had asked for him to go like on camera and talk about something. And one of the things he said was, you know, the Muslim ummah is like a body if one part of it hurts, it's like the, the whole body suffers. And so that really stuck to me that that's why we need to be involved and engaged whenever any part of our ummah is hurting. And so alhamdulillah, that kind of started me on my trajectory to being involved with the community, being involved with care. And 17 years later, I'm still here today. So, and that's my story. And and y'all, y'all can like, if you have even a short story, it'd be nice if you can share something about your family as well. We won't bite. Anybody have anything to add? One. If not, I mean, I can, I can share a brief, uh, a little bit about like my history, things that get me thinking. So, um, my parents um, from India and Pakistan. Um, my parents uh, growing up were extremely, uh, really extremely poor, um, and they had very, very little. Um, and I think about a lot of the stories, like my, my mom would tell me, for instance, um, she would tell me that um, once a year on Eid, they would get, um, with her and her siblings, she had um, a sister, older sister and older brother, and every year on Eid, they would get a bottle of shampoo. And they would make that bottle of shampoo together last for the whole year until the next Eid. Um, and some of the stories I think about. Um, and when they moved here, um, they started in L.A., in, a Col in the Culver City area. And there they lived in a little, like, one-bedroom, little tiny, like, back apartment that they had, or like an extension. Um, and my, gran my grandfather would go to work from, from morning to night, and so would my grandmother. And they would take the bus and they would go multiple stops to get to work at a factory. And just think about the stories that my mom would tell me, like um, they didn't have much. Um, she would, one day they uh, walked, they were walking to school and she had, they had found like a mattress that was left outside. And they were so excited to see that, that they went back at night, like later, later in the week and brought that mattress back to their home. And just thinking about the humble beginnings and the humble starts that they had um, and how hard that they worked. And just thinking about also my own life, like my parents, um, they worked, you know, nonstop. And I, like I barely saw, like my dad was always working as a kid and my mom would too. And just thinking about those, you know, concepts of how much they emphasized, like how they kind of gave up their dreams to, or their dream was to see us pursue, you know, 
our education to put us through college to see us grow and they put their whole lives into us so just think about that really motivates me and inspires me and kind of brings me here brings me to I got my uh, I graduated from UC Riverside last year actually um, and pursuing that and then coming to care um, wanting to work with you know youth development and working with all of you of course which has been really great and just trying to do more and inspiring to build off of their legacy right and to kind of you know make their dreams come true right also so just a little story something to think about um does anyone have you know we've mentioned a few does anyone have any anything that they would like to share maybe a little bit at all come on y'all i know i've been working with you all for a few weeks here i know a lot of you have stories there you go. Um, my brain was empty until you said that story because it reminded me of my maternal grandfather. Um, he had a very similar background in Pakistan. Um, he grew up like in a one bedroom house, but he had like um, a good like five siblings and uh, a large family and um, they weren't very educated and well off. And actually his father had passed away. So his mother was single with all the children um, and um, his brothers decided one day that they would sacrifice um, their schooling and work to earn money so that their little brother, my grandfather, would be able to get himself an education where he could support the family. So um, my grandfather was very dedicated and he would, they didn't have like electricity in the house, but he would use like the street lamps outside to like study. And eventually all that hard work paid off and he became a doctor. And he was able to open his own clinic in Pakistan and help um, all the less fortunate that couldn't afford, afford uh, medical care. And there's obviously a lot of injustice when it comes to um, the lower class not being able to um, provide for their family and get basic medical care that for us we really do take for granted. So um, that story has like always inspired me um, where he just used a single street lamp to make himself a doctor and really like, um, really utilize his brother's sacrifice and made them proud. Incredible and may Allah reward um, him and everyone that he's helped also. And just the idea that Sabina mentioned, right? Um, when like as a Muslim body or as a community, right? When something is, you know, you know, we think about the communal aspects and how we dedicate, you know, dedicate our lives and our struggles to helping everybody else out and using our struggle and using our stories to really make it a point to take care of everyone else and to you know it's a community thing it's just like the values of the prophet so i'm also right the value of taking care of you know everyone else and doing what you can to to do that it's very you know a lot of our muslim values as well so thank you um anyone else have anything they'd like to share Uh, my mom's dad, so my granddad, moved from Yemen to England to get uh, more money for his family. And eventually, my grandma and all her um, moved to England as well. And that's where they had their kids. And my granddad had to work um, all the time, a very, like, laborious job. And it wasn't, it was a very difficult job, but he worked all day to provide for his family and him and my grandma, they didn't know any English. So they had to raise their kids in a country where they didn't know the culture or the language. They, you know, my grandma had to go to the market and I don't know, figure out how to buy whatever without any English. They faced racism, of course. Um, but because of their sacrifices um, and what they did, my <clears throat> now, I get to live a good life. I was born in England and me and all my cousins um, because of the sacrifice they put in. Uh, we have a strong Yemeni community there, but now I moved to America. So, and we only got to move to America because of the sacrifices my granddad put in so my mom could have a good life so she could provide a good life for me. And so that's it. 
Thank you. And that's right on cue with, you know, what I want everybody to kind of think about. So a lot of these, like, immigrant stories, right, and a lot of these, a lot of our older generations, whether it's our parents or our grandparents or whoever might be kind of laying the foundation for us, right, and how we can build off of that. So kind of something I want you all to think about is that, you know, that immigrant struggle and, you know, what our previous generations have experienced and how they've used that to kind of guide us and how we can take from that also. Um, something that we're going to, you know, we're going to focus on throughout here. And a lot of us have, you know, those similar stories, of course, and kind of came from those same beginnings. Um, and one final story, does anyone have um, any final thoughts or final things that they would like to share? Anyone from this side or from, or from here again? No? Okay, that's okay. Um, thank you for those of you that did share. Um, they're definitely inspiring stories and, you know, perfect on, right on cue with what I would like us all to kind of focus on today. So without further ado, I want to go ahead and lead us to our next activity and kind of the main focus on today and today's work. We have our uh, poetry activity. Um, so I kind of want to briefly show you all something before and the importance of art and the importance of um, reflection and cultural reflection also. Um, let's see if I can minimize this real quick. Just one. Or something with you all. So, just really quick, um, just thinking about art and kind of the different uh, reflections and the importance of it. Um, a little while ago, I worked on a kind of an art exhibit that um, opened up in Hawaii actually, and it's at the Shangri La in Honolulu. And um, we opened a virtual exhibit during during the start of the pandemic that was focused, it's called the American Muslim Futures Exhibit. So it was a national exhibit and we took um, inquiries from all around, all around the country and different uh, casting calls from all around the country for art. And it was focused on liberation, um, liberation, power, justice, and it was called the American Muslim Futures, right? So we took the visions of 23 Muslim and allied artists and um, their visions of what a just America looked like, and it was really cool. So just thinking about the power that art has and how to use our voice and our stories in a different way that can inspire other people and kind of bring together other people in activism and, or as I like to call it, artivism, right? And using that in social movements and in, you know, and building um, cultural movements as well. So just kind of briefly show some of the different artworks that we worked on it was pretty cool and got to talk to a lot of the artists as well. Just something to kind of think about um, in different songs as well. So just wanted to briefly show you all the power of art and what that could do for us, right? Okay. Well, great. So for our poetry activity, um, just getting you all to think of um, one way, of course, in which we can reflect on our family histories and our struggles is through art, which we've mentioned um, quite a bit. So today we're going to create uh, collective poems, or as we call them, family poetries, that bring together um, shared themes from our family histories and from our you know, experiences. Um, but first, before that, um, going to pass out um, these green strips here um, in a sec, if you want to and this out. Um, so we're going to write out um, for all of us, we're going to write out three lines of poetry, if you want to hand out three to everybody. Um, three lines of poetry that are related to our family histories. So whether or not um, we've all got a chance to interview or got a chance to talk to anybody, use, you know, kind of what you already know and what you've already, you know, um, already are aware of to kind of really guide you here. So what we're going to do is um, on, we're going to write each line, each line of poetry. They don't have to be interconnected in any way um, on a separate piece of, on a separate um, piece of the green strap paper that we have. And these poems, they can be, you know, 
they could be direct quotes, um, whether it's from an interview or it's from direct quotes that your parents or your grandparents or whoever it might be have shared with you in the past or that you know of. Um, they could be moments that were maybe really powerful or inspiring for your family um, or any kind of you know, creative reflection even about your own history or your own family's history as well. So again, um, your lines of poetry, right, they don't need to be in any kind of order or kind of build off of each other. They can, but they don't have to, of course. Um, and we'll give about, I don't know, maybe 10, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Yeah, I think we got yeah, 10 to 15 minutes here to really think and um, write, you know, write our lines out. And then after that, we're going to divide um, into different discussion groups and kind of reflect on our histories with each other. So feel free. Um, and we'll be walking around. Um, and yeah, if anyone has any questions, again, we're always here. So I'll give you all about 10 minutes or so to kind of think and write out um, lines of poetry. So. Okay, and Mariam's going to go around and hand out um, a piece of butcher paper to everybody. And um, this will be kind of like the main, you know, our main uh, presentation kind of aspect that we're going to be focusing on. But as Mariam hands them out, um, real quick before I kind of explain the, uh, the breakout discussion that we're going to have with everybody, um, if I could jump to this really quick. Um, if everyone can see up front here, we have, uh, it's, it might be a little hard to see, but what I want to do with these, uh, with these, this butcher paper is we're going to draw, um, each group is going to draw one of these trees, if you can see up here. Um, we'll hand out some markers as well. Um, Mario, do you have some markers back there? I might have them up here, actually. I got them. Okay. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to draw out one of these trees for each group, right? And I want them to kind of look something, you know, something like that. Um, that's going to be kind of like the main, um, how all our trees are going to look like with our lines of poetry, as you can kind of already kind of see. Um, and don't title it yet. Just kind of draw them out like that. And we'll join you all as well. We'll do our own poetry also. And Mariam's going to hand out um, the markers. And we'll be walking around to facilitate as well. Um, so in your groups for now, though, while, while you do that also, I kind of want to get you all to think about um, some different questions and some different, you know, kind of guide your discussion and kind of guide you all to kind of talk to each other and get to know each other as well and get to know each other's, you know, background and, you know, what's powerful about us and what we've experienced and, you know, what inspires us today. So I have a list of questions that are up here that I want you all to kind of, use to guide your discussion, all right? Um, and as you go through them, um, again, I understand we didn't all get to interview somebody, so kind of just think about your own, share your own experiences also. Um, just get creative with it, right? I kind of, I also want you all to think about this final question that I have in bold and, or not question, but this final like idea that I have in bold that's also underlined, right? So think about these themes. Um, identify three shared themes or common threads from your family from your group's family histories, it'll be important. So we can all go ahead, inshallah. We'll have about 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so. So, and we'll be walking around again. Okay, everybody, if I can get everyone's attention really quick, um, just for a few minutes, um, I kind of want to get everybody to think about some of the things that we've shared about before we kind of like really dig into assembling assembling our poetry together, which many of you have already started, which is, which is good though, I like it. I like the enthusiasm for it, but just to kind of think before, um, before really going into it, but based off of our group stories, um, I just want to hear from you all, like what are some of the themes that have come up um, in our stories here? Um, some of the themes that we can think about that are important, that we've noticed, um, does anyone, would anyone like to share really quick? Come on, yo. Do you have the microphone, Mary? Uh, sacrifice. Sacrifice, yeah. Uh, education. Education. Anyone else? 
Okay, if not, um, some of the ones that um, when I'm walking around and listening to everyone talk and just thinking on my own also, we think about like Iman, faith, right? Then of course sacrifice. Um, and then also um, not giving up, right? Kind of like a theme also. Um, sabar, um, patience. Doesn't necessarily have to be like, you know, like an Islamic value, but it could be anything, right? But those are important, of course. Um, Tawakkal also mentioned faith in Allah, faith in the plan. Um, and then I kind of want to jump to that last question. I think this is um, probably the most important that I want you all to think about. Of course, it's all important, but in your groups and in your experience, um, why is the process of learning and also sharing our family history so important? Um, why are these spaces important for us? Um, what does it kind of make you think about? What Does it inspire you a little bit? Um, anybody? <laughs> Anyone? Everyone's so quiet today and like scared me. <laughs> no, I, I can, um, I guess I can kind of answer that also. Um, so I think about this process of learning and, you know, sharing our histories and you kind of see how much similarity, I guess, we all have and a lot of the stories and a lot of the struggles that we all have shared. Um, we all have that kind of immigrant stories, right? And also it's, I think it's really incredible to see like to look at ourselves, right? All of us, like, we're all the, we, we are all the, like, kind of, like, outcome or kind of, like, the the final results of, you know, of these struggles and of these, you know, this pursuit for happiness, for justice. Like, we're all living that. We're all living that dream that uh, a lot of our parents, our grandparents, our ancestors that they had. Like, we should all, like, of course, like, you know, continue to be humble and thankful, but also, like, understand that, like, we are living the dreams of a lot of our parents and a lot of our ancestors. So, you know, let, let that inspire us and, you know, kind of drive, you know, as we, as we grow and drive, as we pursue our careers and whatnot to kind of remember that concept and really uh, think about how that inspires us and motivates us. But since y'all aren't feeling like sharing as much today and I won't call on anybody also, um, we'll spend the next like, uh, I don't know, spend the next like 10 minutes or so. Again, um, I see many of you have already assembled like our trees here, but we've already sketched out the poetry, right? Um, and then you're going to place the lines of poetry um, in any order, as many of you have already kind of done, and flow, um, any order that makes kind of sense. And then also like get creative, like this group um, back here is um, incredible and I, you all are too like with how creative everyone's been but continue to add on to it make your tree look unique make it look cool you know, get excited with it and then also I want you all to kind of choose um, a title that is really symbolic to your poetry something that's symbolic to all of you so think about those themes and those ideas and then just put the, the title could be anywhere it could be at the top um, wherever makes sense for you all so I'll give you all about 10 minutes. Let me see what time we got. Yeah, um, I'll give you all about 10 minutes or so. And then we will, of course, at the end, present, OK? So yeah, I know. Ugh. So get excited about that. All right, everybody. Um, if I can get everyone's attention really quick. So hopefully we all got everything together. I did walk around and looked like we're all about ready to present. Um, would anyone, would any group, we could all stay in our groups here. Um, would any group like to go first in presenting? Anyone? Awesome. Are y'all going to do a rap like you said or no? No rap? Someone was teasing a rap, but hold on one sec. Let me get you guys a microphone really quick. He's not pres shoot. <laughs> He's not presenting, bro. He's just here for emotional support. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, all right. Bismillah. Okay. It's bigger than black and blue. You know? That's our title. A determined village boy, studying for success, wanting to help his family. 
um, what's it? achieving his dreams and making his family proud. Education creates a path towards justice and activism. When my parents left their whole lives in Bangladesh just to receive a better education so they could provide for both their children plus parents back home. Uh, when my mom would walk home in the snow every day from her uh, laborious, low-paying job but never gave up, taking risks are key, is, uh, are key to success. All right, this is uh, our poem. All, all trust is in Allah, stuck in my cell, thinking there's no way to get out until, boom, Allah has different plans for you. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Yeah, saved by a miracle, all in a million chance. The reality is unbelievable. Wallahi, all trust is in Allah. All right. And my family came from nothing. They'll return to, and they, they turned it into something. They'll, they'll return to nothing. Um, life is short. Let's do our best in front of our Lord. Uh, all right, this last part. Yeah, uh, the only way you can come, that you can help others, <laughs> is to help yourself first. Sometimes change from the, um, the norm is my biggest necessity for making life a lot of uh, impact. Yeah, there we go. See that? I tried my best. All right, you. Oh, nah, bro. We don't do albums, bro. That's haram, bro. We doing the sheets. Okay, and next group. So we kind of started off, oh, sorry, we kind of started off with like our basic um, foundations and virtues. So I said that always strive to do the best you can in your life, even when things seem hard because the end result will always be worth it. The second thing that I said was education is one of the most powerful tools that a person can have in their lives. And then the third thing was that be grateful for all the things that you have in your life, whether they're big or small, and always remember that the more you give to the world, the more you get back. Uh, okay. Across three cities and four different homes, my family's home has always been filled with books. The value and love for education passed generation by generation has influenced myself and many more before me. Uh, admiration for others' good deeds never fails to inspire me to do, to do the same and to be consistent in all my deeds. Next, we move on to a set of examples that derive from these principles and virtues. My grandmother came from a place far away where servants stood waiting for her every wish, to a place called America where she soon realized she alone would be cooking every dish. Unwilling to be labeled as ignorant, she started her own Montessori school, at last positioning herself so she could begin to help the less fortunate. Uh, my grandmother moved to the US, which uh, allowed me to be part of a more diverse community. Um, my father was beat up in school for being a, a colored child and I figured that I don't actually know all the countries that my family is from which could like I don't know I need more knowledge so we titled this palm tree the core of achievement because these foundation um, foundational principles and examples were the root of um, our family's achievement, which is the next generation's um, opportunity for education in this country and being able to have privilege that they did not have. And um, some um, points that led to this title were the similar themes that we all had of sacrifice and ambition and of our um, ancestors utilizing the resources that they had in the situations they were in, 
and trying to attain education to help themselves. Thank you. Look at that palm tree, that's pretty cool, no lie. Um, anyone else? Next group? Awesome, there we go. Um, so our poem, or our tree, is kind of organized at the base where it's like, it's the struggles of our grandparents and our parents leaving their home countries. And then towards the middle of the tree, we start looking at the work of our parents and how much effort they had to put and sacrifice to get to where we are, and that's where the leaves are, which is the fruit of their work and our reflections on how grateful we are. So I'm gonna read like a few of the poems, not all of them. So at the base, there's one that says, uh, I'm just gonna do this. Breaking barriers and starting over, everything they thought was earned in a race. Everything that they thought they earned was erased. My grandfather was the, first leaving, was the first to move, leaving India for new Middle Eastern ground. And then towards the middle, it's like, one shared bathroom, a Snickers candy bar split between, sibling, between six siblings, a craving for more, something they couldn't afford. And then as we finally reach the, the top where we see the benefits, as I sit with the resources of the bay, I wonder what's next on my route. A turning point, all the children they have grown up, they can rest now. Don't forget to look up, it all comes from above. Thank Allah for he is full of mercy and love. Did it for the what? For the vine? <laughs> I think vines before before everyone's talking here, but okay. And then we have three left, or two left, and then ours too, of course. So uh, we labeled our tree the journey, and I'm gonna read some of the poems we have. So the grandfather who endures and builds an orphanage for children with no family. That grandfather is the person who inspired me. He's a little princess. This one says, the grandfather who can't see his wife, daughters, sons, grandsons, and his two little princesses. The grandfather who was not allowed into the USA. Uh, when my grandpa moved to America, he changed his last name, which affected mine. Uh, my father was the first person in his family to get a college education. Okay. My dad grew up in Syria and moved to Canada for university. As a child, my father still went through taking care of his family. My mother used to live in Saudi Arabia during wartime. They eventually moved to Canada where my grandfather wrote about his experience. My family is split because of visa. Oh, sorry. My family is split between India, England, and, and the USA. My family full of doctors helping out each other. Step back onto this new place, America. So many mixed feelings. Working as a child to help their family out. And they have hard workers. New thoughts, new feelings, inside fear. And only a suitcase was brought. Anyone want to read the themes? Okay, so the three themes are beginnings, immigration, and change. <laughs> okay, so um, our tree died. So we wrote all of its personalities. <laughs> so um, it was alive from 2022 to 2022, and it lived for two minutes. <laughs> um, it graduated um, high school in that time, too. Um, yeah, and it was a mother, a teacher, a grandmother, <laughs> a daughter. Um. <laughs> okay, um, so our tree is called the Ladder of Dreams, and um, that's symbolized by the many rungs, um, which contains which contains the uh, the struggles and like sacrifices that our parents or grandparents had to go through in order to get us here at the top of the ladder. Um, so basically, uh, it shows how every single part and every single story um, makes up 
who we are today. And uh, we're currently at the top of the tree, um, enjoying like the fruit of their work. Uh, even though the roots symbolize our family's roots, and um, it, it naturally progresses to the top, basically. So, yeah. Okay, so my poem, I wrote about how my grandpa, Gidl Ahmed, he moved to England. He had faced a lot of racism there, so he had to be resilient. And he worked long hours for a better life. Um, so did my parents. They sacrificed for me and my siblings so that um, my grandparents and parents uh, sacrificed for generations to come. And my mom said to me and my siblings, we don't have a family here, so... We have to build our own community wherever we go. In my poem, um, my parents, um, they had to work hard um, to come to the U.S. for a better and a better and easier life, and they did. So, and then they moved here to give us a better and easier life. <coughs> um, for me, I focused more on like a, the story of my grandparents who um, uh, sacrificed uh, like many things and uh, people as well to get to um, give my parents a decent life who uh, in Pakistan who then moved to America to give me and my sibling a better life. Um, and I, in my poem, I was mostly appreciating um, the blessed life that I have due to the, uh, the sacrifices that they made. Um, my grandparents, they could barely afford a car and they worked hard and moved to Wyoming so that they could help me and my, me, my, my dad and his siblings get into good education and go to college. And my dad moved to California to help us be around a good Muslim community, unlike what he had to go through. Uh, I guess my parents sacrificed leaving their home country of Afghanistan because there was like a war going on, so they wanted like a safe place for me to live. So they all like, they left, and then they eventually ended up meeting back in California. Um, my parents sacrificed his uh, uh, friends and family, and like. Uh, to go through, to get um, us to where we are today, and like um, the struggles and everything that he had to go through. So, yeah. yeah, that's it. And then finally we have ours. Mariam, would you like to? Last, but certainly not least. Okay, so ours is called Rooted in Family and Faith, and the way we organized it is um, our poems go, well, maybe I should read them first. <laughs> um, From the wretches of the earth there grew a single rose. Our purpose is not to make money, but to make a difference. Separated from wife and baby, my father would leave to finish his studies at Cal Poly and take odd jobs looking loading trucks to support his family he only saw on the weekends. An engineer, an immigrant, a grocery store owner, a chauffeur from sports practice to Girl Scout meetings, and so much more. My dad is whatever his kids need him to be. Six people sharing one room in Pakistan to now having a five-bedroom house in the U.S. after years of struggle and hardship. She wakes up hours before I do and is still working long after I've gone to sleep. She works two jobs and still never missed a single basketball game or Girl Scout meeting. All I have to do is call her name. My mother's love for her children would defy gravity. Two continents, three flights, 5,000 miles away, connected by more than a shared name, bound by more than blood, a family built from love. I remember she told us, my children are my dream, all the trees, tri trials, all the trials, the hardship, were worth seeing your smiles. Tawakkul, tawakkul, tawakkul. 
Fear not, for Allah is the greatest of all planners. Awesome. That was great, um, great everybody. And kind of as we, that kind of wraps up most of our, uh, most of our class session today. But um, briefly, um, in thinking about these different stories and thinking about these different poems that we all, um, that we've all heard, um, does anyone have any final thoughts or final ideas that they would like to share? Again, um, one more chance on the microphone for anybody. Um, anyone? Anyone? If not, um, just something that um, resonates with me is just thinking about how similar a lot of our stories are and how similar a lot of our experiences are. So that concept of uh, kind of that communal struggle, but also how a lot of us work for communal like success and for taking care of one another, right? And the concepts of, like this group, for instance, talked about the latter, right? Um, how, you know, the, how our ancestors or our parents, whatever generation built built from the ground up and then where kind of, you know, we, I guess, kind of are like the, enjoy the fruit of that or fruits of their labor. But also that doesn't mean that our lives are, you know, entirely perfect or that we're, you know, we have everything. We also struggle. We also experience a lot. Um, and oftentimes it looks a little different than our previous generations, but that, you know, never discount what you experience also. But continue to build off for the next, for our next generations and for people and inspire people around you also. Um, but yeah, that about wraps up our um, class today. Um, thank you all for um, bear, sticking with me through all these changes and through the schedule changes also. Um, inshallah, next week we will be joined by, I believe, Aziz Akbari, who is an elected official. And we'll be talking about engaging with our local government, so it should be really good. Um, so look forward to seeing you all next week, inshallah. Um, of course, again, as always, we have lunch that is going to be outside in our usual spot, as always, for everyone. So great job. Great class, everybody.